when people discuss the relationship between church and state and people debate whether there should be, for example, a confessional state, a state that recognizes the true religion as, as such. Um, one response that you often get is the, the impracticality of it, that these are sort of self-indulgent debates that don't, don't have any grounding in reality. And I've, I've always said the way I've always answered that is to say that, well, even if something is impractical, um, you you have to uh, aim for heaven to get to purgatory, so to speak, and and that in conceptualizing um, the the structure of the universe, it's very important to get the relationship between the orders right, because otherwise you're going to have a, a disharmonious a disharmonious vision of things, and that that ebbs into every aspect of life. It ebbs into the family you know, as much as the relationship between the church and state, for instance. Um, so for example, you know, if you're, if you're debating the question of uh, religious freedom in the state, in the, the political society as a whole, um, the, the answers that you give to those questions have implications as to the way that one really raises one child, one's children in the faith, for, for example. In other words, you often run into people who uh, say, well, I'm letting my kids decide what religion <laughs> they're they're going to practice. Right. Right. Um, I, I wanted to ask first about this question of practicality yeah. Yeah. and why is it that that shouldn't be the first thing determining the scope of the things we think about? No, thank you. That's that's a. I mean, there there are so many issues packed into what you've just the simple point that you've raised. I mean, we could talk for an hour just about those things, but. Uh, just to just to make a, a few uh, comments um, uh, to start off, um, <clears throat> when people raise a question of practicality um, and and raise the question of um, you know what, what what a confessional state, what would be the point of envisioning a political order that recognizes the truth? of the church when that is something that's simply not going to be feasible. The assumption um, behind that, and um, first of all, that's a serious question, it's a, and it's an important question, but the assumption uh, is almost inevitably um, that we somehow live in a non-confessional state right now, that we somehow live in, in a, a, a neutral state um, in which individuals are are able to pursue particular visions of of what's true and um that that may be the case uh superficially it may look like that's the case but but in fact um it's not so difficult to see once you once you sort of penetrate below the surface that um uh that's far from the truth it's it's sort of like the um i mean to to to, to bring a uh an example that's in the news these days um uh, the Supreme Court decision about uh, abortion. The idea was that the the uh, court had no authority to decide when human life begins, and so they would leave that open as an option. But of course, that's in fact a very clear decision about when life begins, because of, uh, you, you, in a way you can't escape making a decision there. So leaving it open, in fact, is saying that those who um, uh, uh, affirm uh, the beginning of life from conception are are wrong and have no claim. You see, right? So it's 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 a it's actually a positive decision, and something similar could be said about um, the state in relation to uh, the church in in relation to religion. It seems to be a neutral setting up a neutral um, uh, zone to allow individuals to to pursue religion, but in fact that very act determines what is allowed to count for religion. So like you said, with a child, you let your child um, decide, you know, when he reaches uh, high school or something, he can make a decision what religion to follow. The, the, you, you've actually been imposing on him a conception of religion as something that an individual chooses from a place of indifferent freedom. And so that's a very distinctive view that's a very it's a theological judgment it's a very distinctive view of what, what counts as religion and you've imposed right. that on your child you've taught that to your child um and so you have already set the terms anyway so th it seems to me that's a good point to make right at the outset because it um 
it it unmasks this assumption that we somehow are living in a neutral space so that those who would propose um, the church as an authority are are bringing something foreign into uh, into the playing field as you know in contrast to everyone else uh, that's just not the case so it's it's actually all we're already in the beginning sort of talking about competing visions so that's the first point um, the second point about practicality um, uh, a human being is a rational animal and what that means is that um, you know, we're not animals that have reason tacked on at the end. It means that every aspect of human life, even the most practical, um, you know, uh, 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 our, our need for physical survival and so forth, all of those things are rational in a human being. Our rationality reaches all the way down into our animal nature. And, and what that means is that... Um, uh, there's nothing that we do as human beings that isn't done according to some rational judgment about what's true, whether we're aware of it or not. Um, so, so the idea that we, um, uh, that we ought to leave considerations, um, sort of ideals out of the picture and just be practical, we're, we, we in fact are establishing at a kind of a lower level an ideal, and we're going to fall short of that. It's sort of, Plato uses uh, the image, it's similar to what you say about aiming for heaven in order to reach purgatory. Plato says that um, when you, uh, a painter, um, uh, in, in painting a picture, is always in, the, the, the result of the painting is always going to fall short of the image that he was aiming at. But um, it precisely falls short of the ideal. You know, if he were to, to, to say, okay, that's going to happen, so I'm going to set the sights lower, you're, you're setting up uh, a lower level ideal that you're then going to fall short of again, and so forth. Yeah. So the only thing, the only rational way of acting is according to what is true in principle, what's tr what, what, the, what the actual ideal is. Now, once you've established that, you also then have to consider the pragmatic uh, um, you know, the situation, the, 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 the possibilities in a given situation, but they have to be possibilities that are illuminated by, in some sense, measured by what is true. And so, um, you know, to put it all in just a simple word, there's the, as human beings, we, we cannot avoid, uh, asking and in some sense, in our thoughts and, and, and actions already answering the fundamental question, what is true? And so it seems to me we're, we, we do best by facing that and begin with the question right. about the truth of the matter. Well, for example, I mean, to say that it's impractical for the state uh, to, you know, confess the true religion and then thus we shouldn't spend time talking about it. Um, that means that you're not going to be what whatever um, concessions you make to practicality are going to be gone, done under false pretenses if they're That's not right. done in full awareness of what the best is or what the perfect is. And so you're going to uh, subscribe to ideas such as neutrality. That's right. Rather than realizing that that's that doesn't exist. Um, right. And then what, and then you make you make neutrality the good that measures all the other goods. And, and right. I mean, we have, we have an, uh, you know, absolutely common experience of that with tolerance. You know, any, any view is accepted insofar as it conforms to this universal sta standard that we're imposing on everyone called uh, tolerance. So that's a very definite conception of the good that's being universally imposed as a measure for all, um, uh, you know, private goods. And uh, but but as you say, you know, there's something sort of dishonest in that because we we don't recognize that we're actually promoting a distinctive conception of the good. Um, we we claim to be doing just the opposite, and and so there's you know in a way it becomes a much more insidious <laughs> um, uh, uh, process because it it never identifies itself. It becomes kind of a, a hidden manipulative sort of imposition of a definite concept of the good. And that's just, you know, to, to use, uh, you know, modern terms, that's just not fair. 